Hey guys, it's Miss Garavelli. I just wanted to talk to you all about your second paragraph, which is your first body paragraph. So, um, everybody's kind of in a different place, but um, I'm not going to be here during sixth and seventh period. So, I just want to make sure that both of those classes get everything that they need and are caught up as well. So, here is the goal the goal is when we finish class today, you should be done with your first body paragraph. And the best case scenario would be that you also have completed your topic sentence for your second body paragraph about your second point. Okay, so let's just start from the beginning and make sure that we all understand what's happening. So here is my outline. So yesterday we put the information that is in our first paragraph onto our actual MLA document that is gonna be our essay. So you took your hook and you put it here, because it's the first sentence of your paragraph or your whole essay. Then you found your commentary. You should have copied and pasted it and put it underneath your hook. Then you found your background information, if you had any, and you put that underneath your commentary. And then lastly, your thesis. So if you notice all these different colors, um, I do want you to highlight the different parts of each paragraph in a different color, just so that you will know and kind of double check that you have everything. So I put my hook in one color, my commentary in a color, my background information in a color, and then your thesis statement, each point needs to be a different color. Okay, so done with that paragraph. The next thing that you should do is you're gonna go ahead and just press return and then tab over if it doesn't automatically do that for you because we know that we, to begin every paragraph, we have an indention. So now I'm gonna go back to my outline. So now we are gonna be talking about our first body paragraph, which is technically the second paragraph of your essay. In this paragraph, you are going to be talking all about the first point of your thesis. So I'm going to go back to my thesis and look at my first point. Now remember, this right here, this is not my first point. Veterans are special for many reasons. That is introducing my three points. My first point is the first thing after the colon. They make many sacrifices. So now I've got to make that into a sentence that will be called my topic sentence. So then I'm going to scroll down here and it says paragraph two. Underneath that, it says type topic sentence here, which is the first point in our thesis statement that we already discussed. So I just wrote, veterans never stop making sacrifices. That is exactly what my reason is, is about making sacrifices. And I just worded it a little bit differently. One thing I've seen, people are trying to start with they. I know that they is referring to the veterans, but you need to start your paragraph with the actual people that you're referring to. And then throughout your paragraph, you can say they um, every so often, but say veterans first. So veterans stop, never stop making sacrifices. Done with my topic sentence. Now for my commentary. Now your commentary, this is what most people struggle with because it is a higher order thinking skill, which means that you, you have to think, you have to put in some extra effort. It's not always just gonna pop into your head. It definitely doesn't for me. If you can see right here, I wrote this first as my commentary, and then literally today during first period, I changed it to all of this. So what I decided is that, well, first of all, commentary. Here is some good information about commentary that I'm going to print out for you guys. Commentary is literally just you com commenting on a point that you've made. So your topic sentence, your commentary is commenting on whatever your topic sentence is, like whatever your point is. So some ways that you can begin commentary, like this shows that. So this is a great way to start commentary because it's forcing you to really think about what it is that you just said. Another thing that you can do, and this is what I did, I decided that I wanted to have some type of um, fact that backed up what I was trying to say about how they never stop making sacrifices. So I found a statistic that I liked and I changed it to a question. So the statistic was right here. It says um, more than 900,000 children have experienced the deployment of one or both parents multiple times. So to me, that is a great example of how veterans make sacrifices because they are being um, deployed and the children, you know, are obviously like being left behind or they're having to move several times, like some of you might have experienced with their um, family member that is, you know, serving. So I changed that to a question, but even though I changed that to a question, it still did not come from my head. It came from a source, so I have to cite it. So I went back to my outline and I said, did you know that more than 900,000 children have experienced the deployment of one or both parents multiple times? 
Now, after that, I have to cite it. Remember, in-text citation means that we are going to put a parentheses, and then we're going to give credit to the author and the article, not the website. So when I looked at this website, I could not find an article. I looked at the top, and I looked at the bottom and could not find an author. So that means I'm not going to write no author. I'm just going to put the title of the article in quotation marks inside of my parentheses because that's all I have. So I went here, and here's my parentheses. There are my quotation marks, and I put the title, 11 Facts About Military Families, in quotation, close parentheses, question mark. Notice that I capitalized every word, so don't get lazy and just capitalize the first one and stop. Capitalize all of them. Now, I'm really, like, in a good position to write commentary because I can write about this fact. So I started with this sentence starter that I just showed you and said, this shows the incredible sacrifice that men and women make daily. Veterans leave their families so that they can fight for the freedom of Americans. These men and women do not want to leave their children and spouses behind, but they have such a strong love for their country that they feel as though they have no other option. So that's my commentary. I'm actually going to delete this because I like what I came up with there better. Now, notice a couple things about this. I did not just constantly repeat myself. I'm talking about the sacrifices, but I'm not going to continually say they sacrifice, they sacrifice. Like some, of, some people are just kind of repeating themselves and that is not good writing. You wanna make sure that you're not being repetitive. So now the last thing I have to do is write my conclusion sentence. Your conclusion sentence does just what it sounds like. It concludes your paragraph, it ends your paragraph. So some big things to remember about that. When a reader reads the last sentence of your paragraph, they should know that you're done talking about that point. They should not feel like there's something that's missing or that you were going to keep going and you just kind of stopped randomly. They should know that it's done. So I'm going to scroll down and here is where it talks about conclusion sentence. So the last sentence, conclusion sentence, your reader should know that your paragraph is ending. It should be a good transition into your next paragraph. So my conclusion sentence is, so you write it right here where it says type conclusion sentence here. The sacrifices made by veterans should never be something that is taken for granted. This is just one of the many reasons why veterans are special. Now, later, I might change that and try to add some bigger words or say it differently, but right now, it, it, it did its job, it concluded my paragraph, and I like it. So now I'm done with that paragraph. So the very last step is that I have to copy and paste it into my essay. So here's my essay. So you should press return, and like we just said, make an indention. And the very first thing you're going to copy and paste is your topic sentence. If you want to keep your colors the same, you can. And I did that like by accident. I'm going to go ahead and just change this to the same color too, to that orange color. Because I want your topic sentence a color, your commentary a color, and then your conclusion sentence a color just so that you can make sure that you have everything. So I copied and pasted my topic sentence. I copy and pasted my commentary. And look, I included my citation because that's part of my paragraph. And then I copied and pasted my conclusion sentence. So three different colors. And the last thing that you want to do is you want to select, I mean you really can just select the entire thing and make sure that it says Times New Roman right here and 12 point font. If it doesn't then you need to find Times New Roman 12 point font and make sure that you click it because you want all of it to be the same. And that is all that you need to do today. And if you finish, another thing that you can go ahead and do is write your topic sentence for your second point. So I'm going to go to my thesis and look at my topic, my, I mean my second point, which is they are heroic. So I'm saying that veterans are special because they're heroic. So I'm going to go to my outline and look down here where it says paragraph three. This paragraph should be all about the second point in your thesis. Now, one thing that you could do is try to think of a transition word to begin your paragraph. So remember, transitions mean that you are transitioning or changing from one paragraph to the next. So you want to have a transition word or words, but then you want to include, obviously, your second point. So some different things that you can do. Sorry, I just had to schedule my appointment for my child. I'm going to show you all this that I found earlier. Now I can't find it. Let's see. Let's see if this is the one. Okay, this might be a good one. Hmm. Okay, so right here, addition of items, you want to pick a transition that is showing like an addition to what you're already saying. So really think about what it is that you're doing. So this whole paragraph is talking about why they're special. 
So each body paragraph is another reason of why they're special. So this would be a good place to start. So look at these words. And also besides further, furthermore, two, moreover, in addition, then of equal importance, equally important, another. Now all these words are not gonna work to be a transition word for my next paragraph but I'm gonna see if I can find one that is. So you could say something like, or I'm gonna say something like, um, let's see, hmm. I like moreover, and I like equally important. Let me see what I can do. Furthermore, comma, so you're gonna put a comma after your transition word. Let me get rid of this. Furthermore, not only, oh my gosh, and it's highlighted again, not only do veterans make sacrifices, but they are also something heroic. Now, I don't want to just say very. I feel like that is something that I just always say. So I'm going to find a synonym for very. Extremely, exceedingly, let's see, tremendously, I like immensely, that sounds good, immensely. They are also immensely, I know I spelled that wrong, yep, heroic. Okay, let me get rid of the highlight, and there's my topic sentence. So furthermore, not only do veterans make sacrifices, but they are also immensely heroic. There's my second point, there's my transition, I mentioned what I just talked about, and then I brought in my second point. So now I am done. You do not even have to copy and paste this to your document because we'll do that on Monday, but that is all that you need to do. So finish your second paragraph and then start your third, which is just your, just talk about your second point and just do your topic sentence and that is it. Just email me if you have any questions.